Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So I'm getting ready to head over to my parents' house for the 4th of July for um, our kind of like family celebration um, and to get in the pool, which I'm very excited about. But I want to sit down and really quickly film my wrap up for the month of June, which is kind of a pathetic wrap up. I had a really difficult reading month and I didn't really enjoy most of what I read during the month of June. Um, I'll start with the kind of what seems to be a staple and that is Animorphs books. So I did finish The Stranger um, which is the seventh book in the Animorphs series and I did enjoy this one as much as I've enjoyed the rest of them so this one definitely was probably the one I liked most during the month which is pretty sad to say um, but yeah, so I finished this one, and then I went on to read The Megamorphs Volume 1, The Andalite's Gift. So I had gone online to find like a chronological reading order for them, um, as far as like the events of the books, and this one is supposed to come after seven. And since I had gotten it in this big eBay order that I had done, I decided, well, I've got it, I might as well go ahead and read it in the order it's supposed to go in. So I did. It took me like a month to read this almost almost an entire month like technically I finished this in July like on the second day of July but I'm including it just because I want to be done with it and I don't want to have to rehash in at the end of this month um, but basically this was ridiculous so I'm not gonna say that the premise of the Animorph series isn't kind of ridiculous it is but like in a fun and suspenseful kind of way that you can get into and relate to the characters when you take it out of kind of that one person perspective, because all of these books are one person perspective, um, and then you put it in the multi perspective, and then you kind of send them on an, an adventure that isn't really related to the overall plot, like it doesn't move the story forward. It's just sort of like, okay, it's summer and this crazy thing happened because it was like, one of the characters gets amnesia and then there's a dust monster that attacks them when they're morphing and it was just like not necessary and just kind of like ridiculous. Is there a spider on me? Something's tickling me. I don't like it. I don't like it. So anyways, no. I'm, I will probably be skipping the next Megamorphs book when it comes up in the series because I just was not not feeling it. So then I ended up reading Backspring. So this was the book that I picked from my Try a Chapter Tag video and the very first chapter of this is amazing and captivating and the writing is so beautiful and just like y you can really see and feel, feel and smell like basically what is being described. Like that's how good the writing is in the first chapter. And while the writing stays, you know, kind of beautiful and lyrical and there's just a lot of um there there are passages throughout that are really just beautiful it doesn't hold up as far as like the entire book being as captivating as that first chapter so you end up with kind of this mundane picture of these two people that are very not likable or three people really that are just not likable and it's basically this married couple who are going through kind of a rough time um, she's dealing with infertility he is um, so he's an architect that's got like a struggling business and then there's this fire at this place that he is supposed to be working on and so there's an arson investigation and then there's the friend of of theirs it's like a mutual friend it's actually his best friend who becomes like the support system for her because he's having kind of PTSD issues um, the husband is and there's like you know the possibility of an affair and it's just kind of like weird I don't know I just there were too many issues going on in this because you know you had the struggle of infertility which is a big thing you had infidelity you know inklings of infidelity you had her struggle with her career which wasn't really like it makes it sound like and like the cover makes it sound like they're going to focus a lot more on her but 
it really doesn't like I mean you get her kind of categorizing everything and like giving everything like weird Latin names and then you have just like his PTSD struggle after this fire and just like coping with the kind of implications of the fire as well as like his physical and mental state after the fire and so there's a lot of like really heavy issues in here but it's a tiny book and so I don't feel like any of the issues really had an opportunity to develop and really have meaning so I I didn't hate it but I also didn't really love this book I don't even remember what I rated it but I don't know it's a beautiful book but it's prettier than it is good and then there's this one my brilliant friend by Elena Ferrante now I don't really know how I feel about this so I read through like maybe the first quarter to third of this book pretty quickly and then after that I kind of lost interest so I think I was reading it in early April and then um, I had either the Dewey's 24 hour readathon or some oh, it was the book buddyathon maybe I don't know there was a readathon and so I put this down to pick up my readathon books being like all right when I finish this readathon I'll pick it back up and I did not I just was not drawn to it at all and I just felt like I feel like Mercy said it really well that it is kind of like mediocre writing and a bunch of mundane stories I personally couldn't really connect with any of the characters. I thought Lila was selfish and kind of reminded me of um, Lucy Greeley uh, from Ann Patchett, like Ann Patchett's best friend. Um, and so like her relationship with Elena, the main character, basically felt kind of like that relationship, which to me was a toxic relationship and so I just couldn't I just found, my, found myself getting really frustrated that the main character was like dumbing herself down because of this girl who was clearly selfish and cared about her own ambitions but also like you could tell that Lila wished she could live Elena's life and so it was just like you're blind to see that she wishes you she were you and you wish you were her and it just like I just kept finding myself really frustrated while reading this but also like moderately bored by the anecdotes and the kind of like meandering pace of this novel um i can't remember her name but uh channel utterly uncool did a really great video about kind of the context of this in italy um and that kind of gave me a little bit more motivation to pick it back up and finish it um along with the fact that this is uh was recommended to me by stephanie from time to read and know how much she loves this so i really i really wanted to know kind of what the hype was about just for me it wasn't it wasn't my kind of book and i like character driven stories but i just couldn't connect to the characters and so i didn't really feel driven to care about them um, so I probably will not be continuing on with the Neapolitan novels. Um, I, I really just am not that interested. I will say the end of the book kind of piqued my interest to be like, well, what happens next? So she did a good job creating suspense in that area, but overall I just, I just didn't really care about this book. And then one last book I want to talk about I did not finish in the month of June, but um, I finished it in for all intents and purposes because I DNF'd it, and that is The Elegance of the Hedgehog. So I think maybe if I'd read this at a different time, I would have been a little bit more interested in it, but reading it after reading uh, My Brilliant Friend and Backspring and reading that Animorph book that I was trudging through, this felt like slogging through cement. Like there is nothing in this book that I cared about. Like I got a hundred pages in and I absolutely hated the main narrator, the older woman. She's so pretentious and annoying and she talks down to you. She's just the most condescending narrator I have ever 
come in contact with in a book and I just couldn't deal with her and then the little girl her like journal entries those were really interesting and like I liked the way that they were written I liked the observations she was making but at the same time like there was nothing to connect to and I just felt like there's nothing in this story that is drawing me in and mostly I just feel like it's making me feel like I'm not smart enough for a book like this which I know is not the truth it's just I feel like the way this is written is just really, really condescending, and maybe that's the point. I don't know, but I ended up just putting this down at 105 pages because I just couldn't suffer through this anymore. So I actually forgot a book when I was um, uploading this video and filling in the information for the down bar with all the links and everything. I realized that I had left out a book. Um, I actually finished an audiobook at the beginning of this month, which was The Forbidden Wish by Jessica Corey, and I loved this book. It was the absolutely the exception to the crappy month that I had reading. Um, I listened to it on audiobook, and I absolutely adored it. I kind of was like making my way through the books that I had been um, my anticipated list and I saw that my library had a audiobook copy of it and so I got that from I think Hoopla or something like that and listened to that this month and it was so good. I loved that it was like an adaptation of Aladdin but the genie's a girl and you know it just had it had all of the elements that I wanted from like a, an Aladdin retelling and I mean there were some cheesy romance things that I probably could have done without but at the same time it was like super badass and fun and fast paced and the audiobook was really well narrated and I really enjoyed it so it was definitely the exception to this crappy reading month so I didn't want to leave it out. <laughs> All right well those are the books that I read in the month of June. It was a terrible reading month. I felt very slumpy and I feel like I'm maybe picking up speed. I picked up a couple of things that are um, a little fluffier or that are a little quicker paced uh, right at the end of June and into the beginning of July and I'm already, already almost finished with two of those. Um, I mentioned in a couple of videos that I've been listening to Ship of Magic by Robin Hobb on audiobook and I am enjoying that and I'm glad that I had that at least to kind of motivate me to, to kind of continue on even though it makes me angry and I want to flip tables because some of the characters are awful and it's just it's been a bad month I think for characters in the books that I've read they just there aren't a lot of characters that I've really been attached to or liked so there's that um, but I am continuing on with that I'm about halfway through with it um, it's just slow because the narrating is slow and it's a huge book so I will definitely be finishing that though in the month of July and then moving on to uh, I think it's the Mad Ship is the next one uh, and getting to join in and talk to people and the Hobblong about it because that's uh, that's where the Hobblong is at this point is reading um, Ship of Magic so I'm excited to actually get to talk to people about Ship of Magic this month so there's that and now I'm rambling and it's time to go eat food and sit by the pool and read and I'm excited about that. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys are having a wonderful day and I will see you guys next time. Bye.